Most sources in this video are accounts from prominent members of the community. The majority of the events we discuss were spread by word of mouth, so there is no telling if we portrayed them as how they actually happened. The Old Roblox Community Some people have had positive and negative experiences and careers out of this desire to bring back older versions of a game that people nowadays are familiar with. Roblox Despite the press using the anti-video game narrative to scold it sometimes, some of us spent our entire childhoods on this game. But very few people can tell the tale of how the Old Roblox Community really started and its true origins. Where did it come from? Who kickstarted the creation of a little internet community like this? The idea of hosting a private server outside of Roblox can be traced all the way back from 2010 with a project called ResBlox. The Roblox external server launcher, also known as RESL, was a project made by a small team that began in 2010. ResBlox's goal was to provide a service and drum up enough attention from the devs. You could create your own private servers outside of Roblox using the latest client at the time. The only downside being was that usernames and character appearances would not load. Eventually, Roblox's updates broke ResBlox and the team shut it down. This was the first attempt at playing Roblox outside of Roblox. As early as mid-2011, a mysterious and vague URL had appeared multiple times on the Roblox forums, starting with the user LocalChum. What were these numbers referring to? Why was this file on the Roblox servers? There were too many questions and no viable answers that would suffice. Very few people, if anyone, pay attention to this link and probably gave it no thoughts. But what nobody knew was that this was to be the very instance which kickstarted a chain of events to create the community we know today. It really gained momentum when in early 2012, the same user made a forum thread on how you could download old versions of Roblox by obtaining a version hash and then substitute it in a URL pointing to the Roblox servers. However, this method wasn't applicable for the versions earlier than the 10th of November 2009, as that was the very first version publicly distributed via Roblox's new auto-updating system and logs in the client history file. Version hashes were later discovered from before deployhistory.txt was created. On that very same forum thread though, Roblox user Julian Detherins had posted the very same URL to the 2008 executable, a file which long predated the auto-updater system. He managed to bring publicity to it through nostalgia and inspired a lot of people to attempt to revive the good old days of Roblox. Then, a user most known today as Raymoff had seen and interacted with this very link. He had played around with the client a bit, but he never really did much with it until a user by the name of Echo Game 1720 that's me, made a video showcasing the 2008 client, bringing even more publicity to the cause. And many people in the comments wanted to be able to play solo or play online with the client. As Remoff saw a high demand for the ability to play solo and play online after seeing his video, that is where RBLX Dev began. RBLX Dev was the idea of having online playable Roblox clients executed into a private server with a 2008 client and 2010 client. It was created by Raymoff when he started the website alone in 2012 and didn't have much growth between 2012 and 2014 with only some script changes done by Loa Launcher. It had a small player base of around 100 people. Most of them had read these forum posts and grew from there. Around mid-2014, a user by the name of Energy Cell discovered the project and soon figured out a way to allow changing player names in the 2008 client. He and Raymond would do more work on the 2008 client as well as on the 2010 client, but they ultimately scrapped work on the 2008 client in favor of 2010. Until 2015, there were no character customization, so everyone had the default new colors that any default character spawned with. Around April of 2015, an early test build for RBLX Step 2010 was released with the ability to join online servers and trust check completely removed, allowing for assets to be used from websites other than Roblox.
It would soon be released to the public in May 2015 with a server list on the website included for it. Character customization was also introduced in the form of hats, and in late 2015, a body color changer was added to the site. It would go on to grow a user base of over 1,000 players, despite registration closing for a couple of months and then reopening. However, in December of 2015, it faced the DMCA takedown, which Energy Cell took credit for. At the time, Energy Cell was working on a secret project and had gotten into a dispute with Raymoff, which led to him getting banned. RBLX Dev then closed its doors to the public and continued its secrecy as Nobelium, going public again as RBLX U, and then being renamed to Nobelium and closing registration. Energy Cell's project, Graphictoria, would be initially released in March 2016 after splitting off with Raymoff and RBLX Dev. This is a large and very notable event that happened in the history of the old Robust community. The discovery of the elusive and highly demanded 2007 client. The earliest the community had at that point was the same June 2008 version that had been found at the very start. Some people were attempted to replicate the 2007 client using the existing 2008 client, though some managed to be glaringly accurate, like Reds' Roblox browser revive. But even so, people were always willing to go further back. In early 2017, an effort was set out by user Dirt Piper, who attempted to organize a movement who, to crawl the web to find the oldest versions of Roblox they could possibly find. It was called the Roblox Client Search Community. It quickly mobilized on Discord, and it managed to gain the attention of the Finobi team, who urged users to assist in the effort. Then, in October 2017, the very same person Reds stumbled upon a person called Musical Programmer who had commented on one of his videos which attempted to recreate the 2007 client and which also reignited the search for it. He revealed that he had a few 2007 client builds sitting on his hard drive along with old Roblox web pages, some of which would be later used down the line in other private servers. The discovery was quickly made public and while people were anticipating a download, it was unfortunately only distributed to the admins of Finobi, who decided to temporarily prevent the client from going public to the client search community at first to exclusively release it on the site. This did not sit well with users. They felt betrayed as the fruit from their labor and participating in the search was stolen off them. People began to complain to Finobi and the client search staff, but the client search team persevered in the hope for a more secure version of the client. During this outburst, a user by the name of Callus got his hands on the original unmodified copy and leaked it to members of the community through Discord DMs, but the main problem with the original build was that it was buggy. I was missing a few things like animations and character respawn due to respawning not being implemented until 2008. A few groups played around with this build on the client, not being called the 2007 boys, However, Finobi urged people to wait for the client to be officially released, keeping their promises to make the client more secure. They managed to patch it to a degree, and Clone Trooper 1019, who was helping the client search at the time, also released the original client on his GitHub page, along with uploading a video showcasing it. After this, the users were happy, and the client got released to Finobi to play for the few months. Later though, it was found out to be littered with security vulnerabilities that was beyond the scope of repair without having the original source code, and Finobi wholeheartedly removed it on the 8th of March 2018. The staff advised players not to host public servers with the 2007 client, as one of the major vulnerabilities were demonstrated by client Gizmo slapping H26. As you can see, when I printed workspace, it printed that and opened calculator. I have achieved remote execution, which means I could go ahead and do PowerShell and download a, you know, a row access Trojan or something of the likes, and basically meaning I have full access to your computer. From then on, only a very few private servers dare to pursue the 2007 client. Thank you.
And there you have it. Another niche corner of the internet that has drama much like any other. You've learned that all of us humans can get blinded by nostalgia sometimes. To understand the community best, you have to know the past. And then you can decide for the present. Many influential figures have graced and made their mark in this community. But most of this changes down to the players, as throughout the lifespan of the community, hundreds of thousands of players have experienced it in one way or another. It just defined careers for some people, gave people some experience, and also gave people throwbacks to what they once experienced as a child all these years ago. This is the first episode of the Chronicles of the Old Witness community. Be sure to join us back for another one soon. We hope you enjoyed it. And see you soon.